Hello and welcome back to everyone who's been keeping up with this project. We left off by finishing this little wall up against the house to retain our backfill material and we capped it and adhered it to the block. So we're on to screeding and laying some concrete pavers in this video. But before we do that I gotta check my grades. And the grade we're looking to meet is obviously the top of that cap. So I use my screed rails or 10 foot gas pipe that is one and a quarter inch exterior, one inch interior. It's a nice galvanized steel so they stay straight and they don't bend, giving you a nice straight screed and you don't have any dips or dives in your patio after. But I checked with the level and the pipes before I compacted. Make sure I was about the same height that I needed to be or just a tad lower because as you go to set these screed rails in you can add up to about a half an inch of your bedding material underneath them to get them to the height that you need them to be. But if your base stone is too high then you got to remove base stone and get it a little bit lower. So it's always better to have your base just a touch lower than it, than it is to have it a touch higher. And you can see what I mean by putting a little bit of chipstone under your pipes to be able to settle them in and get them to the correct height that you need. And that's what I'm doing here. I dumped myself a nice little pile of chipstone is what I call it. It's one quarter inch clean crushed aggregate. No fine materials in it. But I'm using that to level my pipes off. If a pipe needs to go down, I just hammer it into the base stone. If it needs to go up, I throw some chipstone under it and get it to the height that I need it. I showed it the other day, but I'm actually trying a new chip stone this year. It's not like that crushed blue stone you've seen. It's actually smaller. It's all quarter inch or less clean crushed granite. I think it's going to work out better. And it's actually at a place that's closer to my house. So it's all a win-win. So now that our screed rails are set in, we can just spread out all our chipstone roughly. I like to go about a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch higher than the pipes so that I know when I go to screed I don't have any low spots. But as I mentioned about this chipstone, I'm pretty excited about it because it's actually crushed granite as opposed to the crushed blue stone that I've been using, which if you don't know, granite is just a harder stone which is a good thing for underneath the pavers and it's smaller it's a smaller crushed stone crushed stone and it's cleaner so those are two pluses right there there's less dust so water can travel through better and it's smaller so it locks together better as well so those are two pluses it's closer to my house and it's cheaper so we got four pluses right there I'm pretty excited about it I can't wait to see how this chip stone works out for me Wow, that's a pleasure to screed. Been a while since I tried a new bedding material. <laughs> Man, I don't know who makes this stuff, but God bless them. I hope they don't stop. It's basically quarter inch sand. <laughs>
We are all screeded out. As you guys saw, sometimes I get questions about what I do with the pipes. After you screed it, you just pluck them out, fill the channel with some more chipstone, and then trowel it out smooth. I got my guideline set up on my pavers at about a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch off of the back of the caps to make a joint line. We are screeded, we removed the pipes, filled in those channels that the pipes were in, and I moved my pallets nice and close. I could have used my eight foot screed to screed a bigger section, but I wanted to leave that strip so I can access it with the machine, which is why I used the six footer. So I'm ready to lay pavers and the style I'm going with is I'm doing an outer border which is going to match the main pavers and then we're going to do an accent inner border with the contrast as you see there. And I really like that style. It makes everything pop with the, the black contrasting row but then it kind of ties everything together when you have that outer paver match the inner pavers. So the main pavers we're using are manufactured by a company called Genest. The style is called Grand Katahdin Stone, and the color is Granite Blend. If you order a full pallet, the pallet's going to weigh 3,460 pounds, and you get 124 square feet per pallet. This is what they look like on a pallet. It's a three-piece design. You have a large rectangle, a square, and a small rectangle, and we lay them randomly. So the outer border pavers we're using are also manufactured by Genest, but instead of Grand Katahdin, this is called Katahdin Stone. Same color, granite blend. This pallet weighs 3,340 pounds, and you get 117 square feet per pallet. And this is what it looks like on the pallet. It's a three-piece design as well, just like the main pavers, but it's a linear design. You have a long rectangle, medium rectangle, and then a small square, and it makes for a really good border course. So I use those pavers for borders a lot, but we've actually built a couple walkways using it just in a linear pattern, and it looks really good. It matches that old cobblestone style, natural stone style, really well. This was a set of concrete steps that we stone veneered and capped with gray granite treads and pattern stock so it matches that kind of style perfectly and finally here's the inner border paver that we're using it's manufactured by Nico Lock. the style is called Old Vienna and the color is Raven that nice dark black color I love these pavers so that's all the pavers that I'm using on this project I love the manufacturers this Genest Grand Katahdin and Katahdin Stone, I love it so much because the wavy joint lines, they're not a straight tile looking joint line. The edges are curved and the actual joints themselves are wavy. So it gives it that nice rustic look. They do have a big variance, I've noticed, in their color tones. So you got to make sure you mix them all in together really good from separate layers. If you just use a whole palette in one area and then a whole nother palette in another area, you're going to really tell the differences in color tone. So you got to pull from multiple palettes for sure. Good morning. Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. Birds are chirping, Benny. Birds are chirping. Sounds like they're kind of up a little bit. Yep. It was crazy when we first got here. Yeah, they were howling at each other. Got a few pavers laid yesterday. And now we're ready to start hammering <coughs> down. It is 8.30 right now. And we got a long day of being able to just lay some pavers down. So we should make a lot of progress. Let's ask Benny what he's thinking. I'm thinking it looks good. Looks good? It looks great. What do you got to say to your fans, dude? <laughs> I love asking that question I, to him because he's just like... <laughs> what would you say? I would say hello. Hello. Hi. Tell him hello in the comments. Alright, we're just going to get right into the day, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it, too.
if you guys can see that out there. Little homemade little barge or something, I don't know. Pretty cool though. So we moved along, it's now 9.30, it's been an hour. And we got all these pavers laid out a few feet, about three and a half feet. But we wanted to do that before we screeded this section so we could still kind of access it and work in here. And as you can see, they're very straight and squared off. So now we're gonna set up our screed rails and screed this side. What do you think, Benny? You getting a workout? A little bit. Nice. It's gonna be worse when it's hot. I bet the viewers are wondering if you can pick that up in one shot. No way. Come on, dude. You can't do six? <laughs> Dog, that would put the season down real quick. Oh, yeah. I'm you sure wouldn't be throwing good. discs until next year. <laughs> With what arms? <laughs> With Don. Yeah. Like that SpongeBob episode when he picks up, like picks something up and his inflatable arms fall off. Yeah. Exactly. Just like that. <laughs> so I am definitely liking that chipstone. Like I said previously, we haven't used this chipstone before. We usually get three eighths inch crushed blue stone, but uh, a provider that I usually get our three quarter stone from and a few other materials. They actually had this stuff and it's crushed granite and it's one quarter inch or less and it's really it's a really nice chipstone so we may be using this chipstone this year but i like it a lot better it's a lot closer too yeah a lot closer it's actually less expensive so pretty excited about that doesn't pop on camera as much though nah especially when it gets hit with water i'm gonna get less views on youtube Less clicks on the thumbnails. <laughs> the stone. What yeah. About? yeah. Now people are going to start thinking I got stone dust. They're going to be like, why are you laying on stone dust? Because you can't tell. That is not stone dust. That is very nice, clean, crushed granite. All right, bud. Back to work. Okay, now that I got that long strip laid out and installed, we're going to set up our screed rails on the outside here and as I've mentioned before in previous videos and I'm gonna explain it a little bit more in this video but we're trying to pitch towards that little garage or, sh or shed there to my right and then also down to the end by the machine so we always slope our paver installs two different ways to ensure good water runoff you don't want any standing water on your pavers and it will be standing water after you use polymeric sand, which is what we use in the middle of the joints. That seals the joints up and prevents water from flowing through them. So if you have a dip or a dive in your patio or you're not sloped properly, it will hold on to water and, and have puddles. And that's not something you want to do. So you got to take your time. Make sure these screed rails are set in properly at the correct slope. And um, again, just, just take your time. This, this part of the install is crucial and it's not worth rushing through because in the end it's gonna bite you in the butt. Dude, how did I set myself up like this? I don't know. Just don't know how I did it, dude. I thought too hard. That's what happens when you think too hard. People ask me questions how I do things. It's like, listen, I don't even really know anymore because I just do it, you know? Think I would have right no, this this part right here is actually really close to this. I gotta wait till I'm like over here somewhere. Yeah, pull some of that out of my way. Don't take too much now. <laughs> Dude, you actually sounded like super worried too. I like it. It's funny. You better take more than that. <laughs> I 
I love getting comments from people. Some people are like, you guys have way too much fun on the job site. Like in a good, they don't mean it in a bad way. Just like, yeah, the appreciate it. Yeah, you gotta, dude. There's no other way I want to spend my day, dude. I'm not a miserable guy. Mm -hmm. I don't like feeling miserable. You know, some you know, people, nice some people just like that feeling. <clears throat> I like feeling down and out. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> you gotta be in control of that in your own mind, you know what I mean? Hey, I'm not that guy. Yeah, I'm not that guy. Are you messing with me? I'm not that kind of guy. About that peace, love, and prosperity. Like a lot of people don't know what to say in those moments, so all you hear is, "What'd you say?" Yeah, what? Did I? Excuse me. There was a part at the competition, dude. I got it on film with Joey, but there was these guys carrying this huge piece of granite. There was like six of them or whatever, and Joey was just kind of like making fun of the roads. There's only, you can only have five people. So he looks at the camera and he's like, they're cheating, bro. And I'm like, I'm like, Joey, we're the only ones that aren't cheating, bud. He's like, that's why we're called the Christian hardscaper. We do things the right way. <laughs> dude, I started laughing, bro. Yeah, that's more than four guys. Just go over there with like a, a siren. Oh, that's what those are gonna be countertops, dude. Yeah, but that should be illegal. We're the only ones following rules, Joey. Maybe that's our own problem. That's why our company is called Christian Hardscape. <laughs> we only do it the right way. That's right. So there's a lot of times when I screed by myself, so I have to pull the material and then when I get a lot of extra, I have to put the level down, grab a rake, and just kind of do that all on my own. It's very efficient to have another guy with you that can at least just pull all the extra out of your way so you can focus on just screeding only. There's that. We'll use some of that for these pipes. It is slightly more than an eighth of a slope. Slightly more than an eighth of a slope. So everything is, the water's sloping this way and this way. We're golden. We gotta pull those pipes out as we start laying pavers and we'll just fill in the channels with some more chipstone. Now that we're screeded, we just pull our pipes out, fill in the empty channel, and trial it off smooth, and we can continue laying pavers. And as you move along, you can pull the pipes out. You don't really have to pull them all out at once. You can just kind of do it section by section, so that's usually what we do. And as far as the pattern that I'm laying, I don't lay pavers with patterns unless it's customer-specific. I lay them randomly. And with a three-piece design like this, there's only a few things you got to look out for. And you don't want joint lines that are very long, which a long joint line to me would be over five pavers long. And you also don't want four-way intersections. Four-way intersections are when the corners of four pavers meet and form a plus sign. It's something you want to stay away from when laying randomly 
because it just pops out and you can really see it uh, from far away if you know what you're looking for. And the other thing we're looking out for is to not put a bunch of the same shape right next to each other. So if you can get all three of those things worked out and make sure you don't do them, you're going to have a nice randomly laid patio or walkway. We've got all the main pavers laid of this big area over here. We got a room for a border brick and then the wall block. Ben is lifting the border up so we can add some chipstone and then hammer the border into place. The edge of any patio or walkway is the first point of failure if not done right. So we always set them higher than these pavers and set them into place to help ensure they don't sink in the future. In the future. Get a good look. Get a good look. Benny in his natural habitat. I wouldn't say natural. <laughs> You're looking pretty natural. Okay. Tell all the viewers, Benny, you don't like wearing knee pads. They always give me crap. You want some knee pads? No, I'm good. Here. You heard it. He's an insubordinate employee. Yep. What can I do? Can't fire him. There's half my company gone. I have a mutiny soon. What'd you say? On the verge of mutiny. <laughs> so these have all been lifted up and set into place. I mentioned this in a lot of the paper videos I do, but you can tell you really got to mix in different layers from different pallets. We got quite a few pallets over there and um, every manufacturer of pavers you get the color tone is going to vary just a little bit per pallet and per batch they make so you got to do your best job of mixing in all the lights and the darks with each other or else you can really end up looking funny huh bud depends on your taste what kind of taste would it be if you had all light on one side and all dark on another? People are like looking at the moon and stuff. Okay. You know? Space cadets. Space cadets. <laughs> so we've got our screed level over here. Just want to show you we got our nice eighth of a slope. And this is after I went through and hammered stuff down. You always got to go through with your hammer and make adjustments. It's just the way it goes. So I just want to talk a minute and uh, explain when I do jobs like this, I try not to make any cuts, especially if I'm doing straight lines or squared off edges. So that's really important when it comes to where you start. We started in that top right corner. That's our, that was our pretty much our 90 degree angle. And we laid 
straight down the front of the house and then straight out. And we stopped on the joint line that made the most sense on this project and just ran that straight. So this whole front area didn't require any cuts of the main um, pavers until we got over to that little pop out on the house. So that's what allowed us to not make any cuts and be able to put the border in nice and smooth. But like I mentioned in all my videos where you see me put border pavers in, we have to lift them up higher than the main paver with the chipstone and hammer them into place so that we can prevent the settling and sinking in the future. If you don't do this, that, that edge or border brick is just the most prone to failure in its, in its lifetime. What do you think, bud? Walkway patio, dude. Yeah, man. All the border is done and set. We got our square line set up for the front of our wall. That string is set an inch and a half away from our border paver. Because if you remember me mentioning, we're going to be leaving a strip of chip stone in between the wall and the pavers to catch this surface water that comes down over the pavers. We'll go down through our clean crushed drainage stone and into that um, French drain that you saw me install during the backfill. So we're ready to start laying block. Benny's got a bunch of them stacked up for us because he's Darman. Darman. Dar Call him the Darman. You're right at the dar. Hey, can I come in the dar, man? Where's the dar? The door. The dar, oh, the oh, dar behind oh, you. The dar. Yeah, I wish that light would just turn on, dude, when you're standing underneath it. So we did that same thing along the edge of this house. It was a little thin strip of chipstone. Because we have to keep the blocks a little bit off of the house. So there's no pressure on it. And that fills in the gap so nothing can fall down in there. And it also allows water to drain down and permeate as well. We catch the base stone and then drain over to our French drain as well. So we're just set up for success over here, Benny. Yep, water's flowing. Yep. So let's get to building the wall. Dar wall. Dar wall. So as far as this sitting wall that we're building, it's going to be three blocks high on its highest point. And um, when, I, when I build walls like this that are going to be up against pavers, whether it's a patio or walkway like this, um, I don't like to build the wall first. I like to lay the pavers out, and the reason is, just like I was explaining earlier, I don't like to make cuts on the pavers if I don't have to. So if you can lay out your patio to where it needs to be, and then build your sitting wall onto the, the same bedding stone as your pavers, that's going to allow your wall to be about two and a half inches below this below the top of your pavers and that's going to lock the wall in just fine especially if it's only a three block high retaining slash sitting wall you don't need to bury it any more than that and again it prevents you from having to make a bunch of cuts along the edge of the wall moving along <laughs> i love all like the things you say as a youtuber dude you're just like all right hi guys making progress moving along check it out <laughs> ben did some more screeding he's ready to lay some pavers dude is that what you're gonna do yep. wow hey can you tell the viewers the ones that think you're my son <laughs> something like what i don't know whatever comes to mind Oh, what comes to mind when someone thinks you're my son? Oh, your son. I thought you said your son. What comes to mind? Yeah. Must have time traveled or something. Time traveled? For anybody who doesn't know, Benny is a year older than I am. So, there. Yeah, take it. Take it. Take it. Benny's it. older than me. He ages better than me, okay? That's all that means, bro. So this Teco block SEMA wall system comes with a certain amount of solid block so that you could split them if you wanted to and make corners. That way you wouldn't have to buy any or you can actually buy corners like we have over there. 
uh, it's two different ways to build it but they give you that so that you have the option and if not you just throw them in there like a regular unit You don't want any wiggle. That means they're too, they're off center with each other. But the back's got a lot of wiggle. You gotta set the back down. Here we go. Nice. Then we want that eighth of a slope back as well so that the blocks are leaning backwards and then the water will shed to the back of the wall. So we're going an eighth that way and an eighth backwards. We're not building this wall level because this patio or walkway slopes as well. So if you built the wall level, you'd have one side up higher than the other which doesn't look good you can kind of see that and when you build a wall at a eighth of a slope it's very hard to notice especially if it's going with the same slope of the the pavers that you installed benny not bad for five days huh not bad at all not bad The first course in for the majority of the wall. So we're off to a really good start tomorrow. Border is all in. And I can't stress enough how important it is to lay these jobs up so there's no cuts as much as possible. That makes laying the, the patio much quicker. But I actually have to go get tires for my dump trailer in the morning. Ben's gonna come here on his own and he's gonna core fill this entire first row of block so that when I get back, we can keep building. So he's gonna come here and keep moving on the job. They call that two birds with one stone, Ben. Bird hunting. Bird hunting. Hey, bud. Wanna say goodbye? You guys know the deal. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that like and subscribe so you can see the next upload. Until the next one, God bless. Peace.